word uh, that we can tend to pour too much at one time. And so uh, I'm going to just allow the Holy Spirit to allow me to tiptoe through Luke chapter number 10. Uh, my aim is to get to verses 30 through 37, but uh, it is necessary for me to complete my assignment that I start uh, uh, and just kind of hop through uh, the beginning of Luke chapter 10. I want to encourage you, if you are a student of the Word, you're serious about the Word of God, to just take that perhaps this week as a uh, reading study. Amen. How many of you read your Bibles? Let me see your hands. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about this when you come to church. Amen. How, how many of you read your Bibles when you're not in church? Amen. I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, because uh, the Bible says that, listen, uh, he will make sure that he feeds us with the word of God, amen, uh, to strengthen uh, our life, amen. A man shall not live, that's where I was trying to go, by bread alone, uh, Jesus told the devil, but by every word, say every word. I need you to respond back to me this morning. Every word uh, that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you're visiting with us for the first time and you're live in the sanctuary, would you wave at us any first time visitors? God bless you. Can y'all clap your hands for our first time visitor? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, we thank God for you sharing with us. I believe this is your word today. Amen. God has you here. If you're watching us online and this is your first time sharing with us, would you go ahead and put FTV in the comments? If you'll do that, FTV in the comments. Amen. And I want to do that. I'm starting a series today. If you have the capability uh, to take notes today. If you have the capability to do that, I want you to uh, find a note section in your phone. If you have an iPhone, I know that uh, you can do that. Amen. Praise God. I don't know about your Android folks. You might need pencil and pad, amen, to take notes because uh, it may not be a multifunctional device that you are on. Uh, but my iPhones, iPhone users, amen, I know that you can do it. Y'all do know we're iPhone church, amen. You do know we're Apple church. We are apostolic, amen. Praise God. Uh, and so everybody who is on Android, we've been praying for your deliverance. Amen. Come now, Jesus. Amen. We've been praying for your deliverance to come on over to the Lord's side. I, I want to start today, um, and, and let me say, I'm, I'm just so full today. I want to thank God for our executive pastor and our absence on last week, who did an awesome job holding it down for us, ministering the word of God. Thank God for him, Elder John Campbell. It's always good to have help in the house. Amen. And so we thank God, amen, for that uh, as well. Amen. You're good, Mario. Uh, Luke chapter number 10. Luke chapter number 10. Um, I'll start around verse number one in a moment. I want to start a teaching today entitled Fully Engaged. Fully uh, Engaged. Fully Engaged. Now, millions and millions of dollars is spent in the corporate world each and every year when companies engage their team members in effective customer service. The companies that understand the importance and understand the value of customer experience, they spend millions and millions of dollars training and equipping their uh, team members, their employees with adequate customer service. And, and it's evident. If you've ever had the opportunity to go to Disney, Disney is a case study for excellence in customer service. Uh, fast food chains that don't invest in customer service, they see it because the experience is different. Now, I don't really want to get into comparing fast food chains, but y'all do know that there is one fast food chain whose customer service is par excellent above uh, the rest, right? I, I really don't want to call their name, but they're closed on Sundays. You, you know the one I'm talking about, right? Right. They're, they're closed uh, on, on Sundays. And, and this chain, they don't open on Sundays, but uh, they're very intentional about their customer service experience. And, and it's interesting because they don't pay their employees any more than the other fast food chains play, pay their employees. 
that when you begin to uh, research the paradigm of Chick-fil-A, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, uh, when you begin to research their paradigm, you understand that in their local markets, they're pulling from the same uh, group of people that everybody else is pulling from. That, that they don't pay their employees $15, $16, $17 an hour starting out, and that's why they have exceptional customer service. No, uh, uh, Chick-fil-A has done an exceptional job in getting their workers to fully engage in the Chick-fil-A philosophy of excellence. That, that, that's what they have done. And as a result, despite having the least amount of stores in the United States, and despite only being open six days a week versus seven days a week of its competitor, Chick-fil-A earns more per store than any of its competitors in the industry. Even more important is that they have a third of the turnover that others in the industry experience according to recent data. When, when asked about the secret sauce that makes Chick-fil-A so successful with its team members, its uh, owner, uh, Dan Cathy, said that the goal is to get employees to fully engage in the attitude that makes Chick-fil-A great. He, he said this, he says, quote, our attitude and our philosophy is to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that God has entrusted to us, to have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. I said, man, that's amazing right there. Can, can I read that one more time, one more time? And, and it's evident, it's evident, right? It seems like they went got these folks from somewhere different than the people across the street. And, and I'm a stickler, y'all. I am a stickler for customer service because I just believe if I'm giving you my hard-earned money, the least you can do is say thank you. I, I went to one of these other companies, uh, I'm not going to call it the name, and, and, and I pulled up to the window, and they ain't say nothing to me. Just stuck the bag out the window. I said, God, see, that's the reason. You, you let me know right now I ain't supposed to be eating this. I already felt guilty when I pulled up in the drive-thru. You let me know right now that this is not what I should be putting in my body because they don't even say thank you. And grandmama taught us that when somebody does something for you that they don't have to do, the least you ought to do is say thank you. He said to glorify God. Watch this attitude now. Because that's what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about an attitude of excellence. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about getting your attitude right. He says to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that God has entrusted to us. Oh, this is amazing. To have a positive influence on everybody you come in contact with. Fully engaged. You know why? Because engagement is a powerful thing. It's an expression that indicates when somebody is all in. That's what it means to be fully engaged. It means that you are all in. Are y'all with me? I'm going somewhere with this. And see, success in any endeavor in your life is going to require full engagement. In any area of your life, it's going to require total immersion of yourself into whatever it is that you're undertaking. You will not see the full potential manifest if you don't give your all to it. I'm reminded of a story that was told once when I was in a preacher's conference uh, years ago uh, with Bishop T.D. Jakes. It was when I was invited to come to the preachers, uh, 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 under 40 preachers. He would have these sessions every year. Uh, now I'm 43 and I can't go no more. Um, but I, I, I remember he was, he, was, he was challenging the preachers in the room that, that when, you, when you take on the mantle of pastor or preacher, you, you, you can't halfway do it. You got to throw all of yourself into it. He told us about, about, about his dog that was trapped, in a, uh, not trapped, but locked in a particular room that the dog would keep coming up to this fr these French doors and pushing the door and pushing the door and the door would never move. And the dog would push the door and push the door and push the door and the, the, the door would never move. And then finally the dog would back up 
And the dog would run towards the door and jump and throw all of itself into the door. And the door opened up. Mm -hmm. that, that, that some of you, the reason why the door has not opened up is because you haven't given all of yourself to it yet. That there is a breakthrough, hallelujah, that happens for you when you get fully engaged in whatever it is that you've been assigned to do. Total immersion, fully engaged with your family. Fully engaged with your marriage. Don't get quiet when I'm teaching real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're not giving the best of your time to people outside of the house and then the rest of your time to the people inside of your house and then you want to complain that your house is tore up. No, he says fully engaged. I was prepared for y'all to be quiet today. Fully engaged in school. Some of you saying school is not for me. No, you're not focused. You haven't given all of yourself to it. Be fully engaged, watch this, with your relationship where you cut everything else out and say, I'm going to be engaged in this. And when you're fully engaged, that's when you'll see the fruitfulness that come for engagement. But here's my focus and my assignment today. How about fully engaged with God? See, when we fully engage ourselves with God, God begins to prepare us and he begins to work on us to get us ready for his purpose in our life. I need somebody to say that fully engaged, fully engaged. Type that in the comments, fully engaged, fully engaged. And some of you, listen, for the rest of this year, I want these two words to ring in your spirit, fully engaged. Here's my question to you. What are you fully engaged with right now? What is it in your life that you have have, have an obsession about? What is it in your life that you have thrown everything into? Because when we fully engage with God, God begins to make his will. He begins to make his purpose. He begins to make our destiny known to us. You know why? Because purpose is important to God. I need you to say that. Say that purpose is important to God. Yeah. God ne never created a thing without a purpose. God doesn't create thingamajigs. God doesn't create whatchamacallits. That everything God creates, including you, he created it with a purpose. And listen, sir, listen, ma'am, if you still have breath in your body, God says there's still a purpose for you to be here on the earth. He, he, is, he, is, he is attracted to purposeful people. The Bible says in, in 2 Chronicles uh, 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 2 and 16, 6 and 19, he says, he says, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro, looking for those, watch this, who he can strengthen, those who are fully committed to him. Which means when you get fully committed, there's a strength that comes to you. The, the Bible also says in Romans 8, all things work together. To those who are called according to God's what? Purpose, which means it ain't going to all work together just because it's all working together. It's going to all work together when you understand God has a purpose for my life. I'm trying to help somebody in here right now because we quote that scripture and we take it all out of context. It's going to all work together. It may not all work together for you. God says I'm only obligated to make it work together for those who are called and committed to my purpose. Oh, God. He says when you get fully engaged with the purpose of God, that's when you'll begin to see the plan of God unfold. Do you not know he saved us for a purpose? He didn't just save you so you can meander throughout life. And when you die, you get to go to the pearly gates and get your mansion in the sky. No, he saved you for service. I'm about to lose my church on this turn in the message right here. He saved you, watch this, so he can use you. He can use you to serve his purpose. Luke chapter number four, I ain't got time to go all the way back there, but it was Jesus' inaugural address. And when he stood up in Luke chapter number four and being, began to preach in the temple for the first time, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because, 
He has anointed me. He began to tell you what God uh, called him to do. Listen, listen, you missed it. The spirit of God is upon me because, see, there's a cause that he was anointed. You don't just get anointed for laziness. You don't just get anointed for you. He, 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 he says, I'm anointed for a cause. I'm anointed for a purpose. I'm anointed for God's plan. Would you stop using the fact that you're anointed to benefit you? Because the problem is, some of us, we are our own cause. And God says, I didn't save you for your cause. Y'all didn't hear what they were singing just a moment ago. He said, less of me and more of you. I want to be anointed for your cause, God. And when you get anointed for the cause, there ain't a devil in hell that can stop what God wants to do in your life because I'm anointed for a cause. See, in order to be fully engaged with God's purpose, it's going to take for many of us. Listen, the first thing that God does after he saves us is he begins to work on our attitude. He begins to pivot our attitude. Your next breakthrough in God is not going to come with your money. Your next breakthrough in God is not going to come when he sends you your Boaz or when he sends you your sh no, I shouldn't say it like that. He should send you your, your wife. He, 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 your next breakthrough in God is going to be a pivot in your attitude where you're going to start seeing things different. You're going to have a different attitude about your life. The first thing that God does is save us, but the second thing he does is sanctify us for service. Mm -hmm. See, see we, we get it mixed up because we think that, that we are saved, and now that we're saved, we're going to prosper. But, but I want to apologize to you because we have not taught the full meaning of what prosperity means. That prosperity, listen, does not mean that you're just overflowing with money. That's the lowest form of prosperity. Prosperity simply means an expansion of your responsibility. That in God, he doesn't prosper you so you can become an Instagram model. He don't prosper you so that you can flex on TikTok. He prospers you so that he can expand your responsibility. Say yes to me. Yeah, yeah, everybody wants to prosper, but nobody wants the pressure of responsibility. Because your grandmama told you, too much is given, much is required. So when you say, God, prosper me, God, enlarge my territory, Lord, Lord, blow me up, what you're really saying is, God, I want more responsibility. And here's the question. Should God invest but he's not getting a return? Oh, no, come, come, come here, come here, come here. You ain't that deep in your phone. Look at me, look at me. Come on, you right there, you right there. Stop stirring the beans right now. God says, should he invest where he's getting no return? Because we've messed this up. We think that God is some type of sugar daddy where we could come and rub him the right way spiritually and he's going to open up heaven and pour everything out for me. No, God says, I don't just want your, 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 your part-time commitment. I need you to be fully engaged for what I called and saved you to do. And when we open Tyrone into this particular text in the book of Luke, it's a critical point in Jesus' ministry because we, we see him at the point of ministry. His ministry has gathered enough momentum and enough steam now that he is sending people. He, he, in chapter number 9, he sends the 12. In, in chapter 10 now, read it, he's sending the 70. You see that? They, 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 they've come to their place in a walk with God where they have discovered their purpose. They've come to the place of walking with Jesus, watch this, where they're not just enamored at what Jesus did, but they're saying, now God, do something like that through me. Oh, y'all missed it, y'all missed it, y'all missed it. That they're not, they're not just interested in saying Jesus is the hero, but they're saying, Jesus, however you want to use us in the midst of your ministry, I want to be used for your service. No, no, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that because Jesus had to pour into them. He had to give them some, some Chick-fil-A training. He, he had to tell them in the previous chapters, if any man wants to follow me, the first thing you got to do is what? Deny yourself. Yeah. The first thing you got to do is lose your selfish ways if you want to be used for God. Because he says you cannot be selfish and be in service at the same time. 
Oh, y'all missed this. You know why? Because if your attitude is wrong, you will not serve long. I need somebody to talk back to me right here. If your attitude about what you're doing for God is wrong, let me tell you something. Ministry will wear your butt out. I'm talking real good. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it will. You can always say, I ain't got enough time. You can always say, they ain't right down there. Oh, but when your attitude is right, you'll say, God, whatever time I have, I'll give it to you. Whatever gift I have, I'll give it to you. When your attitude is wrong, you ain't going to serve long. Oh, I've been around the block a few times now. This, this is my 16th year, y'all. I done seen a few people come and a few people go. You can't come in here just gassed up on talking in tongues. Because some of us, we got all the talking in tongues, shana la borosa, but you don't have the right attitude and them tongues ain't going to keep you in the service. That's why you see people who are so deep and then about three or four years later, you look at him in Walmart, and you're like, what in the world happened to you? You were the intercessor. You were the worship leader. You were the elder. You were the deacon. You were serving in the house of the Lord. But, but God says, listen, y'all look at the outside. <laughs> you, you, you was excited because he had it all together on the outside. He, she had it all together on the outside. But God don't look at the outside. He looks at your attitude. He looks at your heart. And if your heart is wrong, you won't serve long. And so, and so Jesus... Listen, listen, we see it in Jesus' ministry because there were some that started out with him that didn't go the distance with him because their heart wasn't good. And, and, and so at this point in, in chapter number 10, um, they, they, Jesus began to say, okay, y'all ready for service? Say that, service. service. Say it again, service. service. So we don't, we don't even like to use that term anymore, service. Like when, when folks, some of you, I'm going to age myself right here. When they went into the military, they didn't say I was going to the military. They said I'm going to the service. service. They'd be like, where, 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 where'd Jabbar went? Oh, Jabbar went into the service. <laughs> Why? Because it was an understanding that when you enlisted, that it's not about me anymore. I'm serving my country. See that it, it was a it was it was a service. See, see the anointing rests upon our lives because there's a service God wants us to engage. And you, my brother and my sister, you were saved for service. The problem with today's believer is that we become our own cause. This is why we don't see the power of God flow like it should. We, 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 we don't, we're not engaging the call of God. And so these people had, had, had denied themselves. They had picked up their cross. And Jesus said in, in chapter 10, I'm sending you into service. And look this. This is important. Look at chapter number 10 and verse number 1. I'm almost there. L look what he says. He says, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. He sent 70 of them out. And he sent them out, glory be to God, Two by two to every city and every place where he himself was about to go. You missed that. You missed that. Because, because watch this here. A part of your purpose, a part of the attitude that you have to have is you have to understand that God has purpose partnerships. Oh, God, we were praying on this Wednesday night. Everybody say the word partnerships. Let me tell you why partnerships is important. Because you will never do anything significant of God by yourself. Because there are no long rangers in the kingdom of God. And, and, and God will partner you with people. He will partner you with a group. He will partner you with a church, to all my anti-church folks. He, he will put you in partnership so that they can help you perform your assignment. God has more than just sexual partnerships for you. Because in this day and time, all we want people to do is people who are going to marry us. And people, God says, no, 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 no. I got people that I'm going to put in partnership with you. And they're going to get you ready for the purpose in which I have for your life. Y'all don't like this, huh? See, see, the Bible talks about this because God never does anything with one person alone. Everybody say partnership. Glory to God. See, th these are 
power partnerships. I speak that over your life right now. That some of you right now are about to walk into a season where God is going to connect you with power partnerships. These are going to be people that's going to help cultivate you. People that's going to help stretch you. People that's going to help take you to the next level. And all throughout the Bible, we see God working in partnerships. We, we, we see the Bible says two is better than one. And a three-ring cord is not easily broken. I feel my help right now. Yeah, yeah, when, when he sent his disciples out, he sent them two by two. Read it in Acts chapter number nine, that before Paul could be released into his ministry, he had to send Ananias to lay hands on him because you're not going to do anything by yourself. Some of us right now, we have to kill this spirit of individualism that has plagued the church, this individual, uh, this spirit of selfiness, because there's nothing significant that you're going to walk into by yourself. That when God gets ready to bless you, it's not just going to be you, but it's going to be a bunch of people that helped you to get to where you are. And if you're walking around here talking about, well, I'm just not a people person. I don't like being around people. Well, you're going to miss your blessing because two thirds of the New Testament is teaching us how to handle people because if you don't do people right you can't do God right y'all don't like me today but I don't care I've been on vacation and I got a word from the Lord he says you got to start watching how you treat people watch how you entertain strangers because that may be the person God is partnering with you this is why right now, help me, Holy Ghost, this is why we see such an attack. We see such division in relationships in our culture right now. This is why you can go to any bookstore in America and the number one area that's selling books is the area on relationships because we have so many people who are relationally deficient and they cannot hold a relationship and it is of the devil because the devil understands if you can't get along with anybody, you'll never discern who they are are in your life. Oh God, you can't walk away from everybody. You can't leave every church. At some point, you got to say, God help me so I can stop pushing away partnerships. Don't y'all shout me down when I'm preaching real good. See, it's an attitude shift and your attitude has to say, Lord, whoever you want to send in my life, send them here. And God got to help me with this new church because in this new church, you got to be careful how you deal with everybody. You got to handle everybody with kicking gloves. They get offended with everything. Y'all could have never survived in my old church because in the old church, they had mean deacons. In the old church, they had mean ushers. I ain't talking to nobody here. In the old church, they had mean uh, a lady, a deaconess that sit on the front row and they ain't mind getting you told if you were out of line because they weren't concerned about your feelings. They was concerned about your future. Lord, bring back the spirit in the church where you can hurt my feelings if you're going to help my future. I know, I know, because the moment you get your feelings hurt, the moment somebody got to rebuke you, the moment somebody got to get you right, you're going to leave and go to somebody else's church, and then the moment they do that, you're going to leave. No, the devil despises partnerships. I need somebody right now to shout it out. Show me my partner, God. Say it again. Show me my partner, God. Oh, you ain't say nothing, huh? Come on, come on, come on. I need you to say that right now. I'm going to run that devil out of here. We're going to run every rebellious spirit out of here. We're going to run every spirit that don't want to submit out of here. Why? Because God says, I put you in partnership. I'm sending you out two by two because there's something you're supposed to do in the earth, and I need people to prepare you for the purpose that I have for you. Lord, I thank you now for everybody that pulled me to the side and told me I was better than I was acting, that God had more for me than what I was dealing with right now. Can I get you to celebrate somebody that hurt your feelings, but they helped your life? He sent them out in partnerships. Listen, because, because, because one is too small of a number to do anything great for God. I'm going to say it again. One, 
You can't do nothing. My time runs out, I'll just stop here. You can't do nothing by yourself. You can't run a school by yourself. You might be the principal, but you can't make it work by yourself. You can't run a business by yourself. You might have the idea. You might have the, the genius of the business, but you can't make it pop by yourself. Oh, come on, somebody. You can't run a ministry by yourself. You got to have somebody, Aaron's and hers, that's holding your hands up and helping you to move forward. You got to have partnership. What the devil is doing in our country right now is he is dividing us because he understands the scripture that says a house divided cannot stand. And so now people are going to the left and people are going to the right and God says, what in the world are you doing? I ain't on the left or the right. I'm in the middle. I need some people to understand the power of partnership. God, lift your hands. I need to prophesy right now. I prophesy that before Labor Day, God is going to begin to send some folks in your life that's going to help you get to where God needs you to go. I, I, I need you right now to say, God, whoever it is, I'm a fully engage. Whoever it is, I'm appreciate them. Whoever it is, I'm a honor them because you cannot receive from who you despise. Stand to your feet. I'm done. God says in this season there are going to be partnerships. It's going to help you heal. There's going to be partnerships that help you cultivate and develop. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. I don't have it all together. I don't know it all. Oh, I don't have all the answers, God. But I thank you that you send partnerships. He sent them out two by two because he understands, watch this, that partners help in your area of weakness. Partnerships protect you from weaknesses. Partnership keeps you accountable. Partnerships reveal blind spots in your life. Partnerships will tell you when your attitude is bad. Oh, God. I don't know why last night I couldn't go to sleep. So I started watching the first few uh, episodes uh, of Insecure. I got any Insecure fans in here know what I'm talking about. And uh, this is the thing that stuck, stuck to me. I'm up like 1 o'clock in the morning watching Insecure. And um, I, I, I noticed in this, in this little girlfriend group, watch this, that they had people that was not afraid to point out their weakness, to point out their blind spot. See, and, and the gist, the revelation that I got is that when you're insecure, it's hard to be in partnership with people. When you don't know who you are, when, when you're really just a, a, a hard shell on the outside, but you're a marshmallow on the inside, it's hard to be in partnership with you because you can't take it when somebody tells you about you. Here's the other thing that I, that I noticed from that show, and I'm about to pray, is that, is that many of them, watch this, they were very, very, very skilled in pointing out other people's deficits. When that thing turned back around on them, when they had to sit down and say, yeah, but you like this, that's when the reaction took place. Lift your hands. I want to pray all over the building. I'm going to stop right here. I, I want you this week to ask God to give you discernment around partnerships. Some of you, the devil has sent some partnerships. <laughs> yeah, and the devil is trying to destroy some divine partnerships. But I declare in the name of Jesus, it shall not work. I declare in the name of Jesus that every weapon that the enemy has conjured up against you, against our church, against this nation, against this community, that it will not work, that there will be a coming together. Lift those hands right now. Yes, God, your prosperity is in your partnership. Your prosperity is embracing viewpoints, opinions, and perspectives that are not like yours. Lift your hands right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare right now that you have fully engaged the purpose of God. Because as you fully engage the purpose of God for your life in every area, including your walk with God, he's going to begin to send people that's going to help cultivate you and get you ready. Oh, God. That there's some people, he's going to send millionaire birthers in your life. Yes, people that, that, that are anointed to birth millionaires, that are anointed to birth entrepreneurs, that are anointed to birth healthy parents. Hallelujah. God is going to send you partnerships. Somebody say partnerships, partnerships. Yes, I'm done, y'all. That's all I really feel. I need you to begin to thank God for it even now. Some of you right now that's been scarred with relationships, some of you right now that have trust issues, you don't trust nobody, I need you to begin to thank God right now because he's going to order your steps. He's going to lead you. 
amen, in the way that you should go. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this word now. As we pick up this conversation on next week, Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that this word now will percolate in our spirits, that it would now ring and echo in our spirits, Lord God. Father, we now deny ourselves just like every disciple of yours has to do. And we pick up our cross, Lord God, and we begin to walk. We begin to make ourselves available for your service. We thank you that there are those under the sound of my voice and watching me even now that they have been anointed for service, Lord God. They have been anointed for a cause, for a purpose, Lord God. I pray over these next several weeks, purpose is going to become clear to us, Lord God. Destiny is going to become clear to us, oh God. We love you and we bless you even now. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, I need you to clap your hands all over the building. Hallelujah. I come against every partnership that the devil is fighting against. Clap your hands. I come against right now every connection that the devil is trying to destroy. Devil, you are a liar. Devil, anything you conjure up, it shall not work. We speak it in the name of Jesus that we have healthy partnerships. Glory to God. I declare he shall not destroy relationships between parents and children. He shall not destroy relationship between spouses, relationship in the spiritual family. I speak it now, Lord, as we fully engage you, our attitude shifts towards partnership. It's done. It is so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Glory be to God. Come on, I need you to clap your hands one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. We're about to go. We're going to give unto the Lord. And I'm going to give many of you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ, to respond to the call that's on your life. I'm going to give many of you who have strayed away and you're going to return back to God. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. I'm going to give those of you listening that has been reluctant and hesitant to connect with a place that you know that God is connecting you with. Partnerships. This is what I need to right now. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. If you're watching me on virtual, I need you to connect right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are those who heard this message. For some of us, Lord God, it was revelation. For others of us, Lord, it was conviction. But we pray today that the harvest is still the same. I pray right now for those that's watching me online, those that's gathered live here in the sanctuary, God, that there's somebody that needs to make a decision that I'm ready to get fully engaged. I'm ready, God, to give you my everything. All of me. All of me. Yes, I've been in church before. Yes, I've read my Bible. But I don't know what it feels like to give you all of me. And I thank you, Lord God, that you didn't hold back with us. You gave us the best of you. In that while we were sinners, Christ came and he died for us. So I pray right now that somebody's been touched by this word. Somebody's heart has been pricked. And they're ready to make a decision for you. If you're in here while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, nobody's looking around, you're watching online, and you say, Bishop, that's me. I need to make a decision for God today. I need to give him all of me. I need to go all in for God in this season. Because I want to be satisfied. I want to be fulfilled. I don't want to gain the whole world and all of his trimming and lose my own soul because I don't have a relationship with God. If you're here today and your head is bowed and your eyes are closed and you want to make Jesus your Lord, all it takes is a surrender for you to say yes to him. That's it. That's it. Do I need to change this or change that? Don't worry about that. God's going to change that as y'all walk together. If you're here today in this sanctuary, if you're watching me online and you say, that's me, I want you to lift your hands. I'm going to pray for you right now, wherever you are. I see your hands lifted. I see your hands lifted. Lift them high. If you're watching me online, I want you to put the hand emoji up. I'm going to pray for you while I'm praying for those who are in the live service. You can put those hands down. If you're here today and you say, I already know Jesus, but I strayed away, man. I've had some challenges. I had some distractions. The devil's been busy. And I've been deceived and I've walked out of the will of God. I walked away from his calls and I started serving my calls. But today I'm ready to come back to God. Let me tell you something. Listen, God is not mad at you. It's the nature of sheep to stray away. But when you have a shepherd, Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd, he comes and gets you and pulls you back into a line and puts you back into the flock. 
You may be here today and you strayed away for whatever purpose, it don't even matter. But you say, today, God, I'm fully dedicating myself to you. I'm fully engaging with you again. Bishop, when you pray for those who just raised their hand, would you pray for me as well? Would you lift your hand? I want to pray for you. I see your hand. I see your hand in the back. God bless you. I see your hand to my left. Come on, watch. you're watching me online. This is not the time to drift. I want you to lift your hand because God says this pandemic has caused you to drift, but Jehovah Roha wants to bring you back so you can fully engage. There's work for you to do. There's a new grace that God wants you to walk in. There's an anointing. There's a purpose that God saved you. Lift that hand right there in the chat. I'm going to pray for you. Third and finally, if you need to be connected, in partnerships. Years ago, the Lord told me, stop using membership and start using partnerships because that's what this place is. It's a place of partnership. It's a place of connection. It's a place of cultivation. It's a place of development. It's a partnership. You give to the church, the church gives back to you. You need a place of partnership today and you say, this is the place where I'm supposed to be. I don't have to go looking anywhere else. I heard God speak to me. I felt his presence. If that's you, lift your hand. You say, Bishop, when you pray for them, I want you to pray for me as well. Lift your hand, lift it high. Amen. I want to pray for you. I see your hands. I see your hands. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. You're watching me online. You can join online. We're going to give you instructions on how to do that right now. Let me pray for everybody who is serious and raise their hand. Father, I thank you and I bless you. Yes, Lord, for the anointing that's in this place right now. I thank you right now for every person, Lord, whose heart you pricked. And today they lifted their hand as a sign of faith. And they want to receive the grace that Jesus brings to put us in divine relationship with you. I thank you for the one that raised their hand and they strayed away, but they're coming back to you. They're fully engaging with you. I bless you for it even now. I even thank you for the one that's going to drop anchor here at Beacon Light. This church is going to be a place of partnership for them, Lord God. Even whether they're live or online, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would now respond to their faith even now. I pray right now that there will be such a peace, such a rest, such a satisfaction that will come over their life. We thank you and we bless you for it now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. It is done. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, clap your hands all over the building. Amen, amen. To those of you that raised your hand and you were serious, this is one thing I want to ask for you. Listen, when we dismiss service in about six minutes, I'm going to ask that you would not race to your cars, that you would come forward. We're going to have some elders here, and in a very safe way, they're going to make sure that all of your spiritual needs are met. You don't have to walk out in front of the crowd. God saw your heart, but we do want to be accountable to you. Amen. If this is your place of partnership, we want to connect you, amen, with this place, and we'll have leaders in the front in just a moment. Listen, we're going to give unto the Lord uh, even now. I want all of you to prepare uh, a gift to lift up unto the Lord. Amen. Yes, a gift to lift up unto the Lord. I don't want you to tip God. Uh, before we left to go on vacation, the Lord had me to share with many of you. You see, many of us have our wall here. And we're going to keep this wall here because uh, as you have prayer requests, we're going to have orange uh, cards in the back of the chairs. We're going to have pens available. I want you to write your prayer requests. I want you to be very intentional about this. And I want you to put it on our prayer wall. Our elders, our leaders, our deacons in our church are going to be praying with you. And whatever it is that you put on that wall, that God is going to answer your prayer. God is going to perform your miracle. God is going to open up the door. Amen. For your life. I, I, I spoke that and I challenged every person in our pivot revival to sow a seed of $45. Say that, $45. Amen. I, I know I know some of you, you you've gotten so accustomed and so routine to... Uh, the challenge to give and to sow into different moves of God that, that you think, oh, this is just so common. It doesn't matter if I give or not. It's so very, very significant that you give. It's amazing because that was on Thursday night, Thursday before last. And since then, I've had three to four people call and text me about what God has done in their life. I, 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 the Lord had me to release this word that as we, uh, as we engage in this notion of pivot, that God is going to turn some things around in our life. Amen. He's going to put some things in a brand new direction. Amen. And I want to challenge many of you to do that. Uh, j just this past week, I had two people to call me. Uh, one one uh, of our members called and said, Bishop, you was, I was on vacation. He says, you were, you were preaching about pivot. He says, and I was out of work uh, for about a year. 
He says, they finally called me back to work and I was able to have money to sow that $45 seed. He says, I went back to work. He says, and I got a brand new position in Birmingham. It's going to be paying me twice as much as what I was making here in New Orleans. He says, God is a God of his word. Y'all missed it. He went from out of work to making twice as much. I got some haters in the room that don't want to clap their hands for what God is doing. That's just a drizzle. That's just a, that's just a, a sign of what God is going to do. And then on, on earlier this week, I was praying with one of our members about a scholarship that they had applied for. Uh, he says there's over a thousand folks throughout the country. It's the Jesse Jackson Toyota Scholarship that pays uh, basically for your entire tuition. They have been paying out of pocket for tuition, uh, scrapping up uh, wherever they can to find money to pay and cover tuition, about $20,000 a year. And out of a thousand people, this is somebody in our church, they were awarded the Jesse Jackson Toyota Scholarship. $75,000 covers tuition full price for the rest of their undergraduate years. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God will turn your situation around. They put it on the wall. I need you to clap your hands right now like that was your son, like that was your daughter, like that was your niece, your nephew, your grandbaby. Come on, I want you to clap your hands. God will do it. He will do it. He will do it. Listen, I want every one of you, I want you to grab a seed. Come on, stand to your feet. I need you to do this. God says in this season, you're going to come to know me as Jira. You're going to come to know me as Jira. You're going to come to know me as the Lord who provides, the God who is our provision. I want you to get a seed. If you have not sown that $45 seed, I want you to do that right now. I want you to sow that. If you have sown it, I want you to get your tithe. I want you to get an offering. Uh, and I want us to lift it unto the Lord even now. There's some of you that's believing God for something. Uh, I'll talk about it next week. I didn't have a chance to get to it in my notes about purpose provision. That when you're operating in the purpose of God, when you're fully engaged, there's a provision that comes over your life. Amen. I'll talk about that on next week. Come on, I want you to do that now. I want you to prepare. You're watching me online. I want you to sow. There's an unusual shift, pivot that's going on in our church. And I don't want you to miss it because you become too familiar. Amen. This is a fresh move of God. And I want you to believe that you receive as you sow into this. The information is on the screen. Amen. If you want to give on Cash App, if you want to give by text to give, amen, all of that is there. If you need an envelope and you're in the service, I thank God for our deacons who are in the aisles. They'll minister an envelope to you. Just lift your hand and lift it high. I don't want anybody to leave out to, uh, today without sowing a seed, amen, into into the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's take a moment while we're standing and prepare our gifts. If you need to do that on your phone, I want you to do that even now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Say by the hand, by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Oh, 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 by the hand of the Almighty. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Yes, I am. Said I'm walking in victory. 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 Got my joy back. Said I'm walking in victory. Yes, I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. Got my joy back. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our gifts now all over the house of the Lord. Amen. We're going to give unto the Lord. I do want to make mention as well that we do have a service opportunity that I want to encourage many of you who can and will come out and help us with on uh, this coming Saturday. We're going to have a uh, church cleanup that's going to take place. We need men and women to come out uh, starting at 830 for just about an hour. We have several areas in our church that we just need uh, some human power to help us uh, to move some things out, to organize some things and prepare, amen, uh, our sanctuary for where it is that God has taken us. 8.30 Saturday morning right here. Uh, you can be right here uh, uh, on the campus. Uh, we're going to have a little breakfast provided for you. Amen. It'll be a great time of fellowship and service as well. Next Sunday is going to be communion. I'm asking all of our elders to wear their appropriate attire. We will be uh, in full communion uh, uh, attire on next week, so please make sure uh, that you're mindful of that. Also, to all of our men, Man Cave is going to take place on
on this Monday. Amen. They will have, uh, there we go, got our men barking in the church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, so it starts, uh, 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 pre-talk is at 6.50. Uh, the actual, uh, you know, coach got all of these uh, athletic terms. Pre-game is at 6.50 and game time is at 7 o'clock. Amen. Uh, so we're asking that you would uh, attend to our social media pages. Amen. So that you can connect. We have some very important information about how you and uh, your family uh, can get vaccinated. Let me say this before we leave. Please, 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 y'all. had a great friend uh, and, and colleague of mine who went home to be with the Lord on this past weekend, uh, under 50 years old, uh, otherwise healthy, uh, contracted uh, the Delta variant and never came out of the hospital. Amen. So I want to encourage you, whether you say, I'm young, Bishop, I'm good. No, we got young people that's passing away. Sometimes God sends healing and we wave him off. You know, I, I want you, I want you to do that. I've been praying for those of you who've been in the valley of decision that you would do that. I don't want to uh, senselessly lose anybody uh, because we rejected the genius that God has placed in the earth through uh, this vaccination, vaccination process. So please, please, please uh, make that decision. You can do that today. You can go to Walgreens or Walmart today, amen, and start your uh, first vaccination, vaccination treatment. I want you to do that. Those of you who have not, please, if I am your pastor, I beseech you, therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God, amen, uh, that you would do that this week, amen, so that you can live. Somebody say, I'm going to live. Say it again. I'm a live. Amen. I'm a live. I'm a live. Come on, let's lift and wave our gifts all over the house of the Lord. You're watching me online. I want you to do that as well. Father, we thank you now for putting us in a position where we can show you we trust you. And we do so by sowing back into the local church. Whatever you have given us, it belongs to you, God. We take a portion of it and we consecrate it for your service now. I thank you that nobody's going to suffer for what they're given. But it's through our giving that you increase us, you bless us, you expand us, and you allow the favor of God to rest upon our lives. We love you and we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your words are important. Say these words after me. I'll always have, I'll always have. because I always give. Amen, amen. If you need to bring your gifts and lay them here on the altar, you're free to walk at this time. If not, I want you to stand there right now and repeat after them. I've been set free. Healed, Healed delivered, made complete. I'm walking. Now I'm walking in victory. Come on, oh, oh by the hand. this place as we were dismissed today we thank you for your word today God we thank you that as we leave out we understand Lord God that we're walking in purpose you're sending us into the mission field to be representatives and examples and ambassadors for the kingdom of God we love you and we bless you now would you protect us Lord would you cover every house now I speak a Psalm 91 covering over every person who is under the sound of my voice we thank you today that the pestilence of the land will not come near our homes. It's done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, before you would move, our elders and our ministers are coming very quickly. If you raised your hand a moment ago and you were serious, would you just make a point of contact with them before you would exit the campus on today? Amen. God bless you. If you raised your hand and you were serious, we're going to give you an opportunity to come forward. Amen. They just want to quickly, quickly make sure that everything, amen, is in agreement with your life. Everybody else, you can be dismissed at this time. I'll see what a powerful word on today. If you received that word and that word was right on time, can you go ahead and type right on time in the chat box right now? Show us some hearts, show us some encouragement if that word was for you. 
I know that word was for you. Go ahead and type right on time in the chat. And I wanna go a step further on today. Maybe you need salvation. Maybe you need to make that decision on today that Lord, I give you my life. You can text the information on the screen, which is BL Life to 40691. Also, if you need a church home, if you are looking for a shepherd and you're looking for individuals like you who are like-minded and love God and love the word of God, go ahead and text BL Life to 40691. And then also, let's say that you simply need prayer on today. Yes, we have ministers and elders waiting, waiting patiently to pray for you and with you on whatever your heart desires. And you can text that information on the screen. Also, I want to give you an, another opportunity to worship through your giving. And there are multiple ways to give here at Beacon Light. You can adhere to that information on the screen as well. We thank all of our partners, all of our visitors. You don't technically have to be a partner to sow into good ground. And Beacon Light of Hammond is good ground. So I thank those in advance if you are a returner to our broadcast, if you're a partner, or if you are a first time viewer on today. I thank you to all those who continue to be obedient to God's word and so week after week after week you make ministry happen and we say thank you thank you thank you I don't know about you but I love staying connected to Beacon Light and how can you stay connected through our social media pages you can follow us on Facebook Instagram and Twitter and also, let's say that you miss a message or if you want to go back and take some more notes, follow us on our YouTube channel as well because sometimes you need to look and hear and, and really, really hear what God is saying in those messages. So the great thing about, about technology is that you can watch over and over again on the YouTube channel. I don't know about you, but I love starting my week off on Tuesday mornings at 6 a.m. It is prayer time with our senior pastor and teacher, Bishop Abair, at 6 a.m. So I need you to go ahead and set your alarm right now at 6 a.m. for our first 15. It's such an impactful moment of prayer and devotion on Tuesday mornings right here on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. On Wednesday, we dive deeper into the Word of God with our Bible studies. And I cannot forget V groups. V groups are still active. They're still happening. Our champs, our cover girls, our teens, our seasoned saints, our singles. There is something for everyone, I promise you. So there's something for everyone here at Beacon Light. So I want you to stay connected, even in the midst of a pandemic. God is still good, and we are claiming August is going to be everything. Have a five-star week. God bless.